Hello everyone, welcome to some mod development in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I'm here to report on improvements to my terrain pack. Uh, these are the terrains for Baikonur, Tanegashima, which is here, uh, Boca Chica, which is currently in the dark there, it's called Brownsville here, and there's also Edwards Air Force Base, which is sort of here-ish, but Edwards Air Force Base isn't a launch site, so it doesn't get a little icon and you can switch to it like this. And the improvement is that it's no longer uh, Kerbal Constructs placeable. Uh, you can place it, but it's already placed. Uh, so thanks to Miku Singularity for explaining to me how it is done with Katniss's mod for Cape Canaveral, and I've sort of implemented it for these terrains, and so we're going to check them out, and there are some caveats because it's a little bit tricky to do this, and we're going to start with Baikonur. So, uh, taking a look at Baikonur, what you can see is uh, the Space Center is sort of buried, and that's by choice. Uh, that is because I wanted the sort of path here for the railway that brings the Soyuz rocket clear. This is Gagarin's start, this location. I did uh, dig a sort of temporary pit, that's one of the quote-unquote improvements. So this is the flame trench for the Soyuz rocket, and I decided to make it indent. We'll improve upon that later. Uh, but Keep in mind that one of the tricks to uh, the train is that the colliders have to be convex, so unless I make this its own separate mesh, the collider still goes right over it. There's no sort of indentation in the collider, and that's well, going to be a recurring theme in some of the problems that we have with these things. But anyway, uh, the reason that the Space Center is placed the way it is is so that your rocket will appear directly over this, or as close as possible. I have to enter coordinates into the configuration for this, just to show you the configuration that makes this possible. Uh, this is Notepad, and so for Baikonur it's like this. If you wanted to change the altitude, so you would go into uh, the folder for the terrain, so it's got to be in your game data. It'll be edmods slash terrains slash, and this is Baikonur underscore patch. And this patch file has the coordinates, and then the altitude here. So if you wanted to change the altitude, you do it here. And then this is the visibility range, how far away you can see it. And then this is the scale of the actual model of Baikonur, if you thought that that was different. But then if you change that, you're going to have to tweak a lot of stuff and figure a lot of stuff right. So uh, that's how all of them are configured. And if you ever think that you didn't like the way I had the altitude, because in some cases the VAB and all are going to be clipping in the terrain, in some places they're going to be sitting on top. Edwards, it doesn't have one, so uh, you could place one there, but there's no point, it's not a launch pad. So, anyway, that is how the configuration works, and let me just bring a rocket outside. So you'll see it's a little bit off, and maybe I should scale this down a bit. It depends on how we look at it. I mean, because I think this is supposed to fit exactly on that, and so I think I previously had it scaled to uh, size 8 instead of size 16. Uh, but we would have to, in the VAB, sort of shift it a little bit. But via the coordinates, I don't think I can get it that precise. Uh, it's just a few meters and typing in coordinates. Maybe, maybe not. So uh, tell me what you think about the scaling of it. But if we go to Kerbal Constructs right now, you can see there's a universal spawn point for Baikonur. That was helping me place uh, it and there's nothing else. So there's no Baikonur terrain here. So this is not currently a uh, Kerbal Constructs placed thing. You could still place it. Uh, I left that configuration around here somewhere. You could probably search for it by filtering. Here, uh, Baikonur terrain center. It's center because Baikonur is much bigger than this. And it covers sort of some of the important bits, like a Garen start, and then this is the area with the Energia pad, and then there's the runway that they bring in stuff with, so that's the runway there. But the proton pads and the Dnieper pads and, you know, all the sort of ballistic missile kind of pads are actually way off to the side here and here, so I decided not to include those because it was getting too big. So yeah, uh, tell me what you think about the scaling. We might rescale it a little bit, but uh, it's here. Positioning is very tricky every time we rescale stuff. So 
if you want to use like some other pad and build some infrastructure, you just uh, go into the Kerbal Constructs menu and you can add a universal spawn point. So that's one of these. This is the OSS miscellaneous one. Don't know if there's any difference between that and the other universal spawn point, which is this one. But this is a spawn point, and so this will be a new spawn point now. And we can sort of move around, let's say, to the energy pad. And then later on, once you've got positioned right, there should be a way to focus on it. But anyway. Uh, you can make it a launch site, you can call it what you want, set the max vessel length height width, mass and parts, make it a rocket pad thing, and then go with the VAB or any, type in your name and then save it, and then you'll have a new little place for the rocket to spawn. And then when you go into VAB, you go down to the Kerbal Constructs menu, and you will spawn your rocket there. Uh, of course, you would also want to use Kerbal Constructs to build, uh, you know, you can spawn an assembly building, a crawler way. We could probably put the crawler way here if we wanted to, for instance. Uh, if we wanted to, oh, oh, no, I still want to modify that. So yeah, then we could, we wanted to put, uh oh. Oh no, but you do have to be careful of not crashing it into your rocket, apparently. Okay, but you get the idea. You can spawn little things with Kerbal Constructs that can help you build this out so it's not such a flat terrain. But um, let's revert. Next up, Tanagashima. Well, sometimes you'll have a very intensely cloudy day. It depends on light settings and scatterer and stuff, so now we can't really see anything. But that's actually because of the clouds. And so if you time warp, you can see stuff. So Tanagashima, the whole space center, is clearly above ground, and that's because the actual launch site is over there. Hopefully we can move the clouds on a little bit so we can see it. Okay, so the launch site is over there, but uh, when RSS places the space center, they place it here. And I didn't want to move the launch sites, any of them, because then if you update real solar system, it's going to change it back again. You're gonna to have to do it again and again and again, or I would have to do a patch on RSS, which is annoying. Anyway, but since they placed it here, uh, what I would do is for the actual launch site, which is over there, uh, put a Kerbal Constructs universal spawn point and uh, your rocket can spawn there. So just to make that clear. Now, uh, while the Space Center is here, remember that whole convex collider thing? Well. Uh, you see, I, I hover my cursor over here, and I can get the top of the VAB, but I can't click on anything else. Well, that's because of the collider of this. Uh, there's a hill over here, <laughs> and uh, th there are hills over there, and so the collider is actually going on top of everything. And that means that you can't, well, you can land on this part of the runway. But this part is no good. I tried to refine that a little bit, and I'll continue to. You can see there's a seam here. That's actually because I cut the mesh so that the collider wouldn't be going all the way from the top of that mountain down. Because otherwise it would. Again, because you can't have a concave collider, this would be a concave surface. But, or we could have multiple colliders. Uh, I'll think about having multiple colliders, but that's later. Uh, I did do some touch up. I removed some clouds around here. There's still a little bit of cloudiness there. Uh, there used to be clouds right around here. You can see I've just basically used the clone tool in Photoshop to cover that up. So, yeah, when we spawn a rocket, it'll just spawn right there. Uh, let's. Uh, it might be hovering though. So when you make a universal spawn point, it'll come in this menu, this KK menu, and it'll be one of these things. So I had a reference spawn for Tanagashima at its root point in order to get it placed properly. Yeah, this seems rather unstable. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do this right now. I'm going to actually move the reference spawn since I don't need it anymore. That's actually the root point of Tanagashima. 
the default terrain is clipping through the island here and so we could raise the island higher in which case it'll cover up the space center again uh, and that once you've placed the universal spawn point at the location of where you want the space center that might be all right um, but for now I decided not to do that for the convenience of peoples uh, I might reconsider that but yeah the reason I didn't get rid of the original terrain is because I didn't know which of my uh, my trains people would use so I would end up having to make a large number of different earth height maps basically for every combination of terrains like if you want to buy Kanur or if you want to buy Kanur plus Tanagashima because otherwise you'd have a void in that location right and maybe you don't want to terrain there but you might want to access the space center there even if you don't have the special terrain it's complicated so I decided not to edit the real solar system terrain the height map so the launch site is here as far as I know don't about the launch oh well, that's the building I guess I don't know they might not have shown it right but I think maybe the pad is I'm just gonna go with this being the pad okay uh, so we're going to have this be the spawn point and Tanegashima launch site okay and I'll change it to my name so this won't be part of the mod but you can do this yourself easily enough you can just spawn a new universal spawn point Sometimes you have to click open base for it to be accessible, by the way. Okay, so here it's stable, but we need more stuff around, so... So yeah, I'm not including the Kerbal Constructs placements with the terrain pack. Obviously, I haven't done, done it here at all anyway. Uh, so I'll have to get around to doing that so that we have some buildings and stuff here. Uh, from a close-up, of course, the resolution of the terrain is not great because... Well, there's so much of it, and there's no avoiding doing the whole island. I think, yeah, I'll probably raise the height of it and just get rid of the original space center uh, myself for myself. So again, if you want to do that first, make sure you place your spawn point. And don't worry if the spawn point is in the ground. Uh, if the spawn point is in the ground, uh, it'll just spawn the rocket on top of the ground, uh, on top of whatever wherever the local collider is. And then you can increase the height of Tanagashima so that the default terrain is not clipping through. And I'll probably do that. Um, I don't know what height would be good, but I'll just set it to 48 now. I have 195. That definitely it will not clip through. Um, but I want to get to the minimum amount. But then again, if you do that, you're not going to be able to access the Space Center. And once you have a universal spawn point here, it's best to just keep the KSC at Cape Canaveral and then use the spawn point system through the KK menu in the VAB to get your rocket to the launch pad. That won't work if you're doing RP-1 though. So I thought of that and you know with the RP-1 uh, launch pad system, I don't know if they'll like these spawn points. I think you're going to have to actually have the KSC at that location, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how the RP-1 launch sites thing would work with this. So that's why I left it possible to access the, the KSC at each of the launch sites. So let's take a look at Boca Chica. So Brownsville this time. Brownsville, I have it underground here. And that's because the runway would look really odd here, basically. If you want a runway here, you can place it with KK. And also, if you're using Pekka's Starship, Pekka's going to have the orbital tank farm and all that business too. Uh, so that'll be placed here in its appropriate location, hopefully. And then you can have that scenery. So let's just uh, spawn something to see how that works. I won't do Soyuz. Let's have the Blue Origin uh, ILV, the old one. Okay, so it spawns right here. You've got sort of a tank farm there, uh, but yeah, this is the spawn point. 
and this is how the terrain looks at grand scale. There's no clipping here because everything is flat. It's not like Tanagashima. Tanagashima is sort of a special case. Uh, though Baikonur was a little bit bumpy. But yeah, Boca Chica is very flat. Again, could use a lot of other stuff, like a city, maybe, here and there. But here we are. So you can spawn your little starship here. And the color uh, is because it's the uh, which, uh, sunrise. The colors will change over time, as you can see, depending on the sun angle and the clouds. If, if it's cloudy, it can be very dark around here, as usual. Okay, so that's Boca Chica. That's pretty straightforward. So as you can see, even if the KSC is underground, they'll spawn you above the collider, wherever the collider happens to be. Now for Edwards, you have to be in the SPH if you want to use. I'll include my universal spawn point for Edwards. I don't know if it'll work out right. Uh, let me just bring out the B-58. Yeah, I don't know if it'll work right, but I'll include this Edwards spawn in the Edwards zip file so that you can use it and you'll set launch site because otherwise you're going to have to fly to Edwards from Vandenberg in order to place the universal spawn. Oh, it's a little bit dark right now. Okay, we lost some electric charge, but we still got some. Okay, so this is Edwards. It starts you over here, and the reason for that is because on testing, I found a little bump in the runway. It, 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 I smoothed it out, but th there is a seam back there, but I didn't think there would be any other problems. But uh, when I tried to start flying from here, I found there was some bump here that caused me some trouble. Uh, there isn't supposed to be, right? The seam is back there. <laughs> There's a reason the seam is back there, but uh, yeah, Edwards is big, and again, it's at, these strings are all cut up so that I could put smaller textures on each bit, but I mean, it's not great, and you might want to put your own custom runway here, again, by Kerbal Constructs, although that might stand out against the terrain, but yes, let's make sure that we can actually take off from it. Actually, this takes some time to spool up, so... This uh, Hustler model takes a lot of speed to actually be able to take off. But yes. Otherwise, except for that bump that I found before, the runway seems clear. And of course you can pr place additional spawn points if you want to use the sort of um, salt flat runways. It's tough to see them on approach though sometimes. But those are soft flat runways, you can see them marked there. And this covers the entire area. If you want to see the location, that's Edwards Air Force Base. And there's the coast, so Edwards Air Force Base is covering this area and then the Vandenberg's over here. So anyway. Uh, that is just the intro to the updates to the train pack. As you can see, there's no Edwards Air Force Base placeable here right now. But if you wanted to place it in a different location, you could. It is still a spawnable object for Kerbal Constructs if you wanted multiple Edwards Air Force Bases for some reason. Uh, and I'll leave it at that with the Hustler pulling Sears G's on a turn right at one Mach 1. So, uh, if there are any questions about how to use this stuff, uh, leave them in the comments below. I will be trying to make Kuru and uh, the Indian Space Center as soon as possible. And I will reconsider the scaling of Baikonur. Uh, tell me what you think about that. And I'll try and place it a little bit better, maybe. Uh, so, my to-do list will be this. Uh, if you guys think that the scaling of Baikonur is wrong, I'll scale it down and try and place it properly like that. Uh, and then also the colliders on Tanagashima. I'll try and make those a little bit better. 
and then the other terrains for Isro and Essa. So, well, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.